So I just got eliminated from my fantasy basketball playoffs. Just like I don't miss Kyber, I don't miss the playoffs. But this year I did. So in recognition of that failure, I bring you these Galaxy of Heroes Faction 6th Man. Now for those of you who are not basketball fans, what you have in basketball is you have your 5-man starting unit and your first guy off the bench. That guy is an offensive spark plug, a defensive stopper. They usually have some deficiencies. They're not as good of an all-around player. They're your Jamal Crawfords, your J.R. Smiths, your OKC era James Hardens. So that's what we are going to be doing on the factions that it makes sense to do this exercise for. Some of these tags are too all-encompassing, like Scoundrels, where it isn't going to be relevant to go through. But for the factions of that it does make sense, we will do this exercise. Now before we begin, I want to thank all of you who have been watching the videos, sharing the videos. I can tell some of you have been sharing these with your guild because of the comments and the analytics showing a big boost into a lot of the older playlists. I really appreciate it. I want to, by the end of May, to hit a thousand subscribers. And I know to do that, I need to make a bigger commitment towards all of you to put out more videos and put out more content. But I tend to take big bites when I want to cover something in the game. So what I'm trying to do and what this video is and what that last talk video was, is an attempt to tackle some topics and ideas in a faster way that doesn't require the same amount of background legwork or visual and aesthetic work that I like to throw in the videos. So thank you again to everybody who watches and supports the channel. I really appreciate it. And now the Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes six man. The larger idea here is that as we all work on these multiple factions, we tend to work on five or so characters, then move on to the next faction. But in a lot of cases, it makes sense to have one, two, or three more of these characters, especially when it comes to 3v3 or other game modes where some of these characters might have a specific use in PvE, in territory war, territory battles, or in raids. So l keeping all of that in mind, looking at which of the other characters that in each faction may be useful to have. But already, starting with the Bounty Hunters, the conceit falls apart because really there's six characters. If we're looking at the starting game, the first ones are going to be Boba Fett, Dengar, Jango, Grief, and Mando, I would argue, with the upcoming Accelerated Farm. It's who I'm testing out with the Chewie event on the new account. Boss, you can't start farming until you hit level 84, level 85. So it's just such a slow point at, it's such a slow farm at that point that you're going to be so far ahead with the other characters. But for us to look at those first six characters and say Boba Fett is the sixth man or whoever else is the sixth man is not very interesting. So we're gonna call Django a separatist and we're gonna talk about the rest. So what we have here is obviously you need your tank and, Bo and Bosk, you need your healer and Karga. Disintegrate is just too powerful with Mando. Dengar is all but required for Chewie, and also he's a banner stealer with those thermals and being under stealth in Grand Arena. And Boba Fett, he's way too important in the early game for Credit Heist, is just too easy to gear. With Bounty Hunter's Resolve and that revive, he's a huge pain. And Execute is an unbelievable ability and is really only matched by Django's unique Zeta. So until you put that Zeta on, Boba Fett and Execute is extremely powerful. So looking at the other six, the first candidate for the seventh man is IG-88. He has a nice AoE that lands some nice debuffs. He has a ship that pairs very well with the Malevolence. Next up, we have Aura Singh, who has one of the fastest leaderships out of the Bounty Hunters. Paired with Mando, she is very dangerous. Now Cad Bane. Cad Bane was great, especially in the old era of Bounty Hunters. He has an unresistible stun, he has a double hit attack, and he has a great ship. 
Zam is just one of the most fun bounty hunters. I'd like to gear her up just for her leadership. She's a ton of fun to bring into territory battles. She's a lot of fun to bring into the uh, heroic tank if you're still running the, the heroic tank. There, there was a time when I liked to use her lead a lot, and I miss those days. It was more fun. Greedo, he ha he's a nice character with his multi-attack that just can keep going. The Zeta ability isn't really worth its Zeta ability, but it does make him marginally better. And I like Greedo. That was, one, that was the childhood favorite. Embo has some really nice niche uses. He is one of the stronger attackers out of the bounty hunters. But if I'm choosing just one more to work on, I gotta choose Aura Singh. The leadership is just too nice to pair with dis with Mando's Disintegrate. It makes a huge difference. It's great for cleanup in Grand Arena if some things go poorly or if you're up against relic teams that you don't quite have a solution for. Aura Singh and Mando can be a great cleanup. The ships make huge contributions to Cad Bane and IG-88. But if we're looking just at the squads, then Aura Singh is the seventh I'd be choosing. Next we have Ewoks. We are not doing clones. They divide up nicely into the 501st and the Bad Batch. Really, you could slide in Cody into the Bad Batch because they don't look like they're going to have a fifth anytime soon. Droids is too much of an umbrella. Empire, once you take out the Troopers, the Remnant, and the Mandos, you have just a squad left over for the most part debatable so next is ewoks there's no debating who the top ones are you got wicked chirpa baplu elder Lal gray we all know that so for the six man we're talking tebow we're talking scout and it's got to be tebow and this isn't just a worthless exercise he's sneaky i've used him in cleanups for a bunch of things but if you're in one of those earlier brackets which i guess now doesn't matter with the changes you probably lost teams on defense but if maybe if you're in divisions one through six and you're shallow you don't really have enough teams and you might have to resort to Ewoks look at your grand arena your opponent's grand arena history see if they like to do a nest solo because if they like to do a nest solo throw in a Tebow lead you might have a chance at messing them up because if they don't understand the mechanics Tebow lead will stop nest and I know this because I messed up with it. I brought in a nest for a solo, and what happens is they're all under stealth, so nest can't counter. And then if Tebow is stealth, he's constantly removing nest nest turn meter. It's a 100% turn meter removal. And so what happens is it's a timeout. You don't go, it's over, and it's it's a successful defend from the Ewoks. Very sneaky. And you can use him with other teams because that turn meter removal is really nice if you're stuck at the bottom portion of your Grand Arena roster. I think I did this with some team a long time ago, I think before I started making videos. But I've used him in some cleanup teams. Not worthless. The First Order. For the purposes of this exercise, Galactic Legends don't exist, otherwise it's not going to be as interesting. This is similar to the Bounty Hunters, but not as much where... I think it's a lot clearer who the starting five are. You've got Kylo Ren on masks, Sith Trooper, Kylo Ren, Hux, and the Executioner. And really, Hux and the Sith Trooper pushed out the Officer and the Storm Trooper. From there, you've got the Pilot, Favsma, and the other Pilot under consideration. I think you can pretty safely eliminate Favsma and the Pilots. We're not factoring in ships into this calculation. So of the Stormtrooper and the Officer, if you were just working on one more, who would I be recommending here? Because we have a situation where we have a nice cantina store farm. It's very quick versus two early nodes that you can farm those, the First Order Stormtrooper from. It's not awful. But for six man, I got to give it to the Officer. The assist that he's able to give to Hux, the cooldown reduction from pinning shot, 
it just makes Hux that much more dangerous with Hux calling his mass attack. That's a big difference maker, speeds things up. It's nice in 3v3 to bring in that little Hux officer squad with Sith Trooper is who I like to use, but you can use Execution. There's options there, but that is the one that I like. Stormtrooper's great. He has uses, but that's my preference. And a bonus as Officer is one of the easiest characters to gear in the game, which makes adding him to that all the easier. For Galactic Republic, what we're really talking here is a Padme squad. We're going to eliminate the 501st. We're going to take out a chunk of the Jedi, but not all. They're going to be part of a Jedi squad. C-3PO is going to CLS. R2, I'm going to give them over to JTR. Otherwise, this is going to be not interesting. So that fifth slot, I'm going to give it to Shock T. Again, that's because if Shock T is a candidate for the sixth slot, this isn't going to be an interesting exercise. Shakti is also very nice in that fifth slot because of that dispel on basic, the crit immunity, and the and the heal. Those are all nice functionality that you can pair with Padme. But if we're adding a sixth character, here are the candidates. We got Barris. She has a nice Zeta. The Zeta adds healing whenever they get critically hit. Some people have done some very nice work with a Relic Barris. Mace Windu has the ship, is an easy gear, and is one of the biggest candidates for a touch-up forthcoming in the game. Not a horrible investment. It's just you're making a bet that it pays off. I was going to consider all these Jedis as candidate, but instead of skipping them, all I'm going to say is all these guys make more sense as some future squad of Galactic Jedi or a Jedi Re Council. They're not good candidates for the purposes of this. Clone Wars Chewie though, legitimate candidate. Those of you who have watched a lot of Arnold's videos knows what he's been able to do with Clone Wars Chewie, pairing him with Padme, getting those stacks of courage, and then letting Clone Wars Chewie do big hits and big damage. A legitimate candidate. And then there is, of course, Cup. But for me, it's Barris. She has too much utility, can be paired Elsewhere, the heal is very nice. I've brought her into other squads throughout Grand Arena. She used to be part of the meta when Kenobi was one of the meta teams. She still has some utility. Very nice to have off the bench in the Galactic Republic. Night Sisters, very clear starting five. Ventress, Daka, Telzin, Zombie, Spirit, and it should be Spirit. I really want a Relic Spirit sooner than later. It does some nice damage. Annoying with the Foresight has a stun. For the six-man slot, we are looking at Acolyte. Very annoying with the stealth. Easiest character in the game to gear up. Talia. Necessary component of the Heroic Sith Raid Phase 4 team. If you have a guild that is still working through that, Talia is one of the easiest characters to set you up for a team that can help you a ton in Phase 4. Initiate helps in Phase 3 of the Heroic Sith Raid. Doesn't need to be geared up in order to make that team function, if that's one you want to look at. But the Phase 4 team is easier to get working. But for me... The sixth man has to be Acolyte because Acolyte gives you two very good 3v3 teams. I like to set them both on defense, but you could take one of them, put them on offense. Having two Night Sister teams is very annoying, and it's that kind of difference that makes Acolyte for me, on top of how easy she is to gear, a go to for the Night Sister six man. 
We're gonna call it right there and make this a part one. We'll come back to this premise in the future. I wanted this to be a quicker video and I can already tell that it's getting long. Again, thank you guys for watching and supporting the channel. I'm putting a link to the Loge Viable Team CLS video right there. If you wanna do something to support the channel, clicking on that, putting in a separate tab, muting it for a couple minutes would be a huge help. I asked you guys to do this before on the C3PO video when we put it out to boost the boost the video showing up in the algorithm in the search terms and it helped a ton people are now finding the channel because of the c3po video i'd like the same thing to happen to the cls one especially because the thresholds in which i beat cls no other video that i saw was able was doing it at the same levels and saving millions of credits i'd like that to get out there again thank you be safe out there everyone and be excellent to each other